most Mercedes are not that good looking, if I'm being honest. Um, I need to go drive a Mercedes so I can see how they drive. I freaking love my Mazda. I love it. It is, it is amazing. Like it drives well, it's held up very well. Um, I don't know, like it gets great gas mileage. Like there's so many amazing benefits to this Mazda. Um, I have the CX-5. I have considered adding a zero and getting this CX-50. Um, <laughs> uh, I laugh because then like there's this whole other spectrum or on the other side of the spectrum. No, actually it's not on the other side of the spectrum. It's not. It is on another spectrum that in my imagination, I would want a Mercedes G-Wagon. Never driven it, have no idea if I even actually like it, but it's just the only car I've seen as of late that I would even consider like going all out on to get. And it gets like 14 miles to the gallon and it costs like a quarter of a million dollars. So it's like, what is that? And why in the world would I even, like, it goes down a little bit of a philosophical trail, but it's important. It, it, it would be a status symbol, right? It's not like actually anything other than a vehicle to drive around and pay more money to operate. Um, it's at that point, just a status symbol. It's interesting, right? Status, class, hmm, interesting. Um, I hope that you all have something that you're looking forward to this weekend, um, kind of more in like the short term, right? I'm looking forward to hanging out with uh, Caitlin, my partner. She is an amazing real estate agent and she has uh, her third uh, client appreciation event happening tomorrow. Cheers and beers. So we are going to go out to her aunt and uncle's brewery in Arlington, Division Brewing. If you're uh, into breweries, which I think is a fun word to say, uh, if you're into breweries and haven't checked out Division, I encourage you to do it. It's a fantastic spot. They also have a pizza and burger place out front. Um, so we're going to have a great day tomorrow. Um, she has lots of people coming out and RSVPing and all of that jazz. So it's going to be fun. Um, that's my short term looking forward to. And then more long term looking forward to is I have had a renewed interest in really elevating my yoga practice lately. And it started at the beginning of the year where I just wanted to take more difficult classes and kind of stretch myself a little bit on that side of things. And so um, yesterday I went to a class with my friend and um, colleague, Brooke Armstrong. And uh, we went over to a class taught by Gina. I think her last name is Dunn, but don't quote me on that. Um, at Ritual One. And holy whoa, first of all, <laughs> the heat in the room was, I, I don't know what it was, but it, I bet it was 100, maybe more. Um, it was amazing. I had a great time kicked my butt, felt good. And yeah, I think like long-term right now, something I'm looking forward to personally is uh, just continuing to increase that, that yoga practice. So uh, what are you looking forward to long-term? I want to know. Um, these car musings, I, you know, I, I don't really have uh, always a certain topic I, I want to come talk to you about. Um, it's mostly going to be a stream of consciousness and whatever kind of pops up in my mind. Um, I am feeling very clear this morning that knowing 
ourselves. So knowing our strengths, knowing our weaknesses, knowing our design is a critical element to success because like sometimes like we want something, we desire something, we have this uh, inkling that success is something we want to work toward and then we get into these patterns where maybe we are trying to be or do something that is outside of our strength wheelhouse or our design wheelhouse and so it gets frustrating that we're not producing or that we're not achieving and we're not accomplishing and so you know part of being a master at something is recognizing that I have strengths and I have weaknesses and I need to work with both in order to accomplish the thing but working with both means that you are working with your awareness and your decision making process about how you use your strengths and what you do with your weaknesses so strengths weaknesses personality design by the way personality and design are human design are basically like two sides of the same coin but they are different um i think i need to turn here um i love this right when there's like a there's a drive and yet all of the people that are like wanting to um, go in the other direction have like covered up the drive you know where you could actually turn and maybe get through instead they don't leave a spot for you to to pull through across the line um maybe i'll make a different video about this when i am more prepared but personality and design your design the way you were born like what's in your dna what's in your blood um those are different things and they complement one another, how they complement one another. But you could kind of think of personality as like your, the consciousness and then your design as your unconscious or your subconscious. And so that is something to just, yeah, give some thought about if you're interested. Um, a lot of times in like work settings, they do like personality assessments or behavior assessments and things like this. But I want you as an individual who is committed to joy, fulfillment, growth, peace, prosperity, abundance, hope, you know, all of the beautiful things in life um, to get to know not just your personality, because I mean, come on, that can actually change based upon our environment, but um, based, but to know your design, to know who did God make you to be? right? And how do we work with that to enjoy life and achieve all the things that we, we want to achieve? All right. Peace, blessings, hope, prosperity to you. I'll see you guys later.